So this podcast is going to center around Philomena Lissandro. Um, she was the last woman to be executed in Alberta. Um, and I'm going to center this discussion around sort of this idea of whether she was a murderer or just sort of a bad girl. Um, you know, we're going to take a look at some of the background in the incident, the evidence that was presented, and the discrepancies with the evidence, um, as well as the sort of societal context surrounding the event, and sort of look at this idea of whether some of her personal background is what led to her execution, rather than actual evidence that she committed a crime. So I'm just going to start with some background about her life and the incident, and then get into sort of the bigger questions. So I'm just going to start with some of the background sort of surrounding some of the characters in this story. So Philomena Sandro, she was born Philomena Costanzo in a poor part of Italy. And her family immigrated to Canada when she was about nine years old to BC to look for work, which was really common at the time for Europeans, especially Italians, to move to Canada looking for work. She was renamed to Florence Lissandro. Um, however, I'm going to refer to her by her name, Philomena, her original name. Um, so when she was 14, her parents arranged for her to marry someone um, she did not like, she did not want to be married. But later, through her husband, she met Emilio Picariello, uh, who was an immigrant from Sicily who controlled a bootlegging empire. So he was the head of an illegal alcohol trafficking group. He's sort of compared to like a godfather figure, sort of head of the mob type character. Um, and Florence, or sorry, Flamina rather, met Emilio and started working for him um, as like a passenger when they would do these illegal alcohol trafficking runs. She would uh, come along in the car as a passenger. But later she decided she wanted to start driving herself. Um, which was, of course, not accepted at the time. And she left her husband. It was rumored that she had an affair with Emilio or his brother while she was living with them. Um, but it's never been made completely clear whether the relationship was strictly, like, employer-employee or if there was something more, if there was a romance involved there. Um, but Philomena, you know, really apparently loved sort of this thrill of going on these rum running trips. She loved driving. You know, uh, she carried a revolver in her purse, which is, you know, really symbolic, sort of, like, the symbol of her disobeying, you know, these sort of expectations of women at the time. So she's sort of often painted as this, like, rebellious, sort of crazy, you know, woman. She was a very young woman. She was only in her very early 20s at the time of the incident, which I'm going to now drive it into. Alright, so let's set the scene here. It's fall 1922 in Alberta, Canada. Prohibition has been enacted as of 1916. It wouldn't be repealed until 1923 the next year. Special force within the Alberta Provincial Police, or APP, is dedicated to combating illegal alcohol trafficking and sales. Emilio Picariello, also known as Emperor Pick, is well aware and uses decoys and bribes to evade the police. In September one day, APP Constable Stephen Lawson is engaged in a car chase with Emilio's son, Steve. He ends up shooting Steve without knowing, but Steve manages to escape with only a wound on his hand. Later, while Lawson is fixing a tire that was shot during the chase, Emilio pulls up Constable Lawson and Lawson tells Emilio that he better go get his son, or he will. Emilio shrugs and drives off. Later, another sergeant, Sergeant Scott, encounters Emilio Picariello and tells him that he and his son are going to be charged for their crimes regarding alcohol trafficking. Emilio says he doesn't care, but he'll kill Lawson if his son was hurt. Later, Picariello returns to his hotel uh, to Filomino Lissandro, where he somehow learns of Steve being shot and apparently continues making threats towards the police and eventually decides that he's going to act on this and go to Stephen Lawson's house. Lumina volunteers to join and says she's going to bring her gun. Once they encounter Lawson outside of his own home, Lawson approaches the car window with Emilio in the driver's seat and Lumina in the passenger seat. 
Emilio and Steven Lawson begin arguing, and at some point Lawson leans into the car and places his arms around Emilio's neck. During the struggle, shots are fired, but it's unknown from who. The only eyewitness is Stephen Lawson's nine-year-old daughter, who claims that he was actually shot while he was running. So, Emilio Picariello and Florence or Philomena Lissandro were both charged with the murder of Stephen Lawson and sentenced to the death penalty. Um, Philomena Lissandro maintained her innocence until her execution, her last words being, Why do you hang me when I didn't do anything? Is there anyone here who has any pity? So, of course, the major question surrounding this is, is she really innocent? And, you know, there are other major questions, such as, was the nine-year-old girl's testimony reliable? And how can they possibly sentence two people for the murder of someone when there was only one fatal shot fired? And they don't know who fired that fatal shot. But of course, there are some, you know, obvious truths surrounding this, such as Lawson was shot in the back, so he must have been running or facing away from the car. Lawson had no guns, so the shots could come from inside the car, although they don't know from which gun. Both Filomino and Emilio had guns on them at the time. And after the fact, Philomena apparently admitted to shooting in self-defense, but here there are some pretty big discrepancies, uh, the major one being that there's no official signed or documented confession because the sergeant who heard her confession claimed he forgot to write it down because he was too distracted and interested and busy listening to the story that he forgot to write it down. Um, another discrepancy is that Philomena apparently claimed that Lawson pointed a gun at her. She only shot when she saw a gun, but Lawson's gun was inside the house. And she also apparently claimed that she only shot while Lawson had his arms around Emilio's neck. And if that's true, you know, how can she say that there was a gun pointed at her if Lawson's arms were both around Emilio's neck? So again, like I said, the major question is, was she innocent? But I'm not really going to ask that question. I think it's pretty clear that one of them were guilty. Um, they were both involved in the murder, whether as accomplices or the actual murderer. And it's clear that they had intent on what with Emilio deciding he was going to take his gun and go to Stephen Lawson's house. And Philomena also saying, you know, I'm going to come with you. Let me get my gun. They both intended to go there to confront Stephen Lawson. I really want to ask the question is, what was Philomena really executed for? Was she really executed for murder? Or was it more about who she was as a person? Was it more because she was disobedient and rebellious and a rebel, really? Was it really more that they were punishing her her previous acts and that they were punishing her directly for the murder of Stephen Lawson. So I think here it's really important to consider sort of other females who were executed around this same time period. So between 1899 and 1935 women, including Philomena Lissandro, were executed um, for treason, you know, charges of treason for murdering their husbands. It's important to note that were not charged with murder, whereas men were typically charged with murder if they murdered their wives. Um, women were charged with treason because, you know, it was considered treasonous to disown their husband or be so disobedient in that way. You know, they were punished more for the fact that their actions were against a man rather than the actual act of murder. It's also important to consider that, in general, women were sort of treated with leniency in, in criminal cases at the time. You know, they were often considered sort of mentally unstable um, when committing crimes, so, you know, sort of lighter sentences because of it. In these cases where the actions were against men or sort of, you know, considered treasonous, they were held criminally responsible. So in Philomena's case, of course, this is true that she was held criminally responsible and executed for um, the murder of Stephen Lawson along with Emilio. But I think... You know, of course, it's not clear whether she was innocent, um, but I don't think we can really excuse her for her actual, you know, criminal behavior. 
Um, you know, of course, the sentence was incredibly harsh given the lack of evidence. Um, I think, you know, it's also important to note that um, in cases where someone ends up murdered during, you know, another crime, you know, in this case, they were you know, going to confront Stephen Lawson and ended up in a confrontation and he ended up dead. Um, whereas normally accidental death would be charged with manslaughter. Um, it was usually considered murder in this sort of context, which is true for this case. Um, and so obviously that's a contributing factor of to why we're both charged with murder. I think there's a lot of other factors into specifically why she, Philomena, was charged and executed for murder. I think obviously the major factor is that she was a woman. Um, you know, of course, as we learn from the textbook, that women in the 1920s were typically, you know, becoming more liberated and participating in more men's, like, activities, what was considered men's activities. Um, Philomena was sort of like the extreme example of that, right? She was involved in legal alcohol trafficking and driving, which was, you know, sort of unheard of at the time. And she carried this revolver around, as I mentioned, you know, sort of like the symbol of her, like, disobedience, her rebelliousness. Um, another important factor to consider is that she was an immigrant, so, you know, that's potentially something that could have made the prosecutors choose to sentence her to death rather than perhaps, you know, charge her with manslaughter or, you know, being an accomplice to murder. And again, it's important to note the factor that it was a cop who was killed, you know, someone in a position of power rather than, you know, a civilian. This wasn't some sort of accidental civilian dispute. This was somebody who would have been considered important in society was killed, which would, you know, of course, potentially contribute to the harsher sentence. So I personally am leaning towards, you know, given the historical context, the idea that it's more likely that she was executed for who she was rather than the actual incident. Um, you know, of course, we she, she did claim that she was innocent right up until her death, uh, you know, right during the execution. But, you know, she didn't, she wasn't necessarily innocent just because she claimed to be, you know, she also did claim that she did shoot, um, just wasn't clear, you know, at what point she shot, so it's unclear if she shot the fatal blip. Um, you know, and she's definitely looked at as a sort of, you know, crazy rebel, like Bonnie and Clyde type situation. Um, and, you know, although she did participate in what was extreme behavior at the time, um, that doesn't necessarily make her so deserving of being executed. You know, she was acting against sort of these societal expectations and gender roles. Again, like I said, although women were sort of more, you know, being more liberated, um, she was sort of the extreme example. And, you know, perhaps that's what led her to be executed. You know, maybe it was more that she was being punished for her sort of who she was rather than the actual murder and you know that's really the question I want to pose is you know was Philomena Lissandro executed for murder or was it more that she was sort of like a criminal bad girl all right so um you know in the end I think it's, it's very difficult to say whether Philomena Lissandro's execution was justified. Obviously, that's the major question is, was she innocent? Was she guilty? But I think, again, like I mentioned, it's sort of almost more valuable to consider, you know, was she executed because she murdered someone or was she executed perhaps because of who she was, you know, sort of this bad girl, rebellious sort of figure, this young woman. Um, I think it's, it's important to look at the story and use it as sort of a catalyst to talk about, um, you know, perhaps sort of the way women were treated, particularly in the justice system in Canada in the 1920s, and also um, the way that um, evidence and lack of evidence was treated in these sorts of cases in the same time period in Canada. At, uh, and even still today, you know, how should we handle situations like this where you know, perhaps someone has a criminal past, but it's unclear if they committed a specific crime. 
Um, all right, so thanks for listening. I'm really excited to hear what anyone has to say, any um, comments anyone has uh, regarding this issue. Uh, so thanks again. Bye.